you like books? I'm outlining a new writing project. Who wrote this book? Read it. Read it. Sometimes I'd write something. What are you writing? Have you written anything lately? I'm Amanda Stern, and this is Bookable. On today's show, we tell you what we're reading. So it might be fairly obvious at this point, but I get very excited about books, and I always want to know what everyone else is reading. So in the spirit of that curiosity, today I'm proud to present to you the Bookable Summer Reading Special. I reached out to two terrific authors whose work and tastes I admire and asked them what they're reading right now. First up, Nathan Englander. He's an extraordinary writer who I've known for more than a decade. Nathan is probably one of the funniest people I know, plus he basically cannot lie. And if he does, he tells you he's lying. The point is, Nathan keeps it real. It's Bookable Podcast, but it's also my friend Amanda, which is like truth serum. So I have to like not run through my list of the books that I think I should be reading now or that I read last year that would sound good now. <laughs> um, exactly. It's like, it's Amanda. She's asking what I'm really reading now. But uh, <laughs> what I'm reading now, honestly, honestly, is like I've been taking stuff off the shelves. I just got some uh, new books delivered. So I have all my scary, my brain, it's time to start new projects, uh, strange books about like anti-Semitism in the 1920s, that Uh kind of stuff. But um, what I'm really reading is, oh, David Litt, who was a a speech writer for Obama. But um, oh, I'm literally just almost done with his uh, book, Democracy in One Book or Less. But I'm I'm one of those people where I'm like, oh, I'm I'm aware I'm like reading the newspaper and refreshing and getting horrible reports from my iPhone. You were on for 11 hours today, refreshing the New York Times. <laughs> I think I know all this stuff, but then I'm also one of those people when they are like changing Mississippi's flag, I'm like, holy shit, that's their racist, that was their racist <laughs> flag. It's like, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, you know, a Long Island yeshiva boy. American history is not my strong suit. So uh, I'm like, I think we're living in an autocracy now, but it's really nice to read a book and really start to understand, oh, this is why Citizens United, like, makes my vote not count and lets rich people, you know, own politicians. And, you know, I, I don't think Mitch McConnell uh, wants, you know, the majority to get to choose their elected officials, but, like, it's nice to understand why. Or even uh, party things where it can be like, oh, gerrymander. Do you mean after Elbridge Gerry, fifth vice president, (laughs) who who cut up his district into a salamander shape and therefore gerrymander? So, yes, it's my kind kind of book. That's one. And then, you know, uh, I had my students read it last semester. And, uh, you know, and uh, you know what? We all support each other and we're all friends. But I just was thinking about... uh, not just the moment in time, which I'm thinking about a lot of uh, what's, you know, happening in America. Uh, you might, again, have looked out the door and seen it. But, um, oh, I, I took Nickel Boys off the shelf again. I just was thinking of structure and 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 Coulson's, you know, he's just, of all the people who get support for their work they're doing, who are actually doing their best work, work you know? <laughs> yeah, like, that's the point. I cheer everyone on and then privately I'll be like, for that, really? But like, you know, these, <laughs> last, these last two books are really so stunning. But uh, structurally, it's just really, it's so short and you can't put it down. And I just wanted to look at that structure again. So I, I, mm. I, I'm almost done with Nickel Boys, but uh, a repeat off the shelf. Mm-hmm. It still counts. All right. So that's one fiction, one nonfiction. Yeah. Um, how are you choosing your books in this moment? You know, uh, it's if there's ever a time for self-reflection, you know, like I'm thinking about a lot of things. So uh, wife Rachel, you know, we have uh, the stuff back to, you know, the anti-racist reading list that she's, you know, put together, which uh, I have to read our, our new stack on that front. And then there's, you know, the stuff for my students, you know, where I, I teach at NYU and, you know, like last semester, I, you know, I had them read uh, the Gia Tolentino and, you know, mixed in with, I don't know, Edward P. Jones's Known World. Like, so, yes, I think as teacher, I think as, you know, person in the world, I, I uh, think as reader. And then again, it's been years. I had back-to-back books 
and your listeners are like, I didn't even know you had a book since 2004. <laughs> but it's true. They were back to back. But I was supposed to have a, uh, I was supposed to have a play up right now. You might have heard the theaters I are know. closed. Yeah. So, oh, I'm just thinking of new projects, and that's as I said. So then I'm like, I'm going to read some, you know, anti-Semitica. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have this idea, and I've also been really thinking about, you know, forms of change. You know. Times have radically changed in some truly horrible ways and some uh, hopefully great ways. But, um, oh, I'm really interested in the essay, back to mentioning, you know, Gia Tolentino or reading this long nonfiction book. But I've been, I've been dipping into essays a lot more. Uh, recently, a neighbor was like, oh, I'm reading your book. And then his wife, I've been to her. She's like, oh, he's listening to your book. I was like, those are two different things. But uh, <laughs> back to being home with kiddos and, and uh, you know, our issues of uh, how we are all raising our families now. Oh, I'm trying some audiobooks. So yeah, I've got the, I'd never read Bad Feminist, but I'm listening to that. So yes, dipping into a lot of essays and, you know, looking at David Sedaris again, things pulled off the shelf. Just, I want to teach myself how to write an essay. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of thinky reading to educate myself. Awesome. And the last oh, and, question. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No. Oh, I was just going to give a shout out because I've been thinking, I'm going to get a uh, just weirdly of what I haven't reached for yet. I'm going to pull down my, I just been thinking a lot about Grace Paley. I don't know why, but I love her story so much, but yeah, the collected Grace Paley, I'm always giving shout outs to for my, you know, just of, of stories that uh, I love, but yes, I'm thinking about stories again too. So I've been dipping into the stories and, you know, pull down my, you know, a, a billion different, you know, best American short stories to poke through and my, you know, singer stories that I love that someone just gave me a new copy of. And, mm. and yes, about to grab the Grace Paley again, because she's just a champion. She really is. And is there anything that you want to recommend? Oh, I just think for the moment and in America and um, again, I just uh, wish there was a government protecting the country in a pandemic um, and on a thousand other fronts. But I was thinking of the book um, Evicted. Did you did you ever read Evicted? It was so no. giant. I'm dying to read that. So, so it's Evicted, Poverty and Profit in the American City is I think is the full title. And it's Matthew Desmond. I think it was his PhD thesis. And I'm, if I remember, Jesus. it was set in Milwaukee. But you just see, you know, when we talk about, you know, endemic racism and, you know, how a meritocracy is supposed to work and, you know, class systems and, you know, just all the issues that are, that we are thankfully, you know, wrestling with head on that should have been, you know, wrestled with 400 years ago or 200 years ago. How old's our country? Anyway, point is, when you see, <laughs> when you see how this book was so brilliant and readable and just devastating and I'm so worried about what's going to happen to people when you see how the eviction system already was working mm -hmm. in America I just think you know in terms of next gigantic issues as people are out of work and as that's going to also as we're going to see you know who the frontline workers are and what color the frontline workers are and right. you know I just it, like that book was so amazing and educational and devastating and such an easy can't put it down read even though it's really uh sad in, in parts but but mm -hmm. that's the one you know i am very worried about what's going to happen to you know people renting apartments out of work who have no safety net across america yeah it so is, it's a great read yeah. though i I'm, okay. I'm all heavy today but evicted is just it's a really it's a you know it won everything and uh mm -hmm. deservedly so again all right, that is an awesome recommendation. Um, thank you. And I know you have to go. We will catch up soon, you and I, properly. Thank you for doing this so much. Um, I'm excited for our listeners to hear oh. and laugh. Oh, I'm so happy to talk to you anytime. And yeah, let's trade Rex and dog photos. That's Nathan Englander. If you're unfamiliar with his work, why not start with his latest book, which is called Kaddish.com. Despite this very unrelaxing and unrestful moment, staying home as we've been doing keeps calling to mind Otessa Moshfeg's 2019 novel, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which was actually one of my favorite books that year. So I gave Otessa a call. And not only did she offer recommendations, but I got some interesting insight into her next project. 
I'm reading this book called Through the Darkness. The subtitle is My Tumultuous Journey from Roman Catholic Nun to Psychic Medium by a medium named Janet Nohavec. Nohavec? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, Can you spell the last name? N-O-H-A-V-E-C. Okay. Awesome. And what's it about? I mean, the title sort of tells us, but tell us what it's about um well it's a memoir of sorts um it's a very very straightforward book um about this woman janet who uh starts off life at somewhat of a disadvantage coming from a dysfunctional family finding religion getting a call to be a nun and then realizing that, in fact, she was um, her real purpose is to be of service as a psychic medium. So I'm at the part of the book where she's traveled to the UK to study mediumship with one of the best mediums in the world. I guess there's a really good school over there. Um, and it's just a really simply told story about something that I'm interested in. And I'm sure that there are plenty of books about the subject. This just happened to be one that I like clicked on and it seemed maybe like a good first one to read without completely overwhelming myself. And my interest in this is, uh, has to do with the book I'm working on that isn't really about mediumship, but it does have me reading this next book that I haven't really had the balls to start yet. It's called Hauntings, Possessions, and Exorcisms by Adam C. Bly, or Blay, B-L-A-I, um, who I guess is like a demonologist. Um, so, you know, I'm like interested in Catholicism, uh, a certain aspect of Catholicism as it has existed and seems like, you know, it's like the stuff of horror movies, but I'm interested in it, like, pretty sincerely because everything that I'm writing fiction-wise these days is taking place in a fictional sort of Eastern European country in mm. which Catholicism is... Uh, like the main paradigm. So I've been interested in exploring that. I'm writing a book now that's set in the Middle Ages in that country, the fix that fictional country. So I'm kind of like sourcing a lot of my information from, you know, history books about the Middle Ages and then also books about spirituality and Last night, I ended up ordering all these books about Slavic mysticism and folk tales and things like that. Mm. So, so that's what I'm reading for research. Mm -hmm. um, in the last month or so, I've read a bunch of memoirs. Um, I read this incredible memoir called The Wave. Oh, yes. I've heard of this. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, it's about this woman's experience losing her entire family to the tsunami and coming out of that experience, deciding to continue to live. Very, very powerful. Even just the opening sequence, the way that she wrote about the wave mm -hmm. is really exceptionally good. I mean, it's just rare that someone who is a really gifted writer goes through something so difficult um, that it's like seemingly so random, like just an incredibly bizarre, devastating natural disaster that just takes your husband, your parents and your children oh and God. leaves and leaves you with like, you know, I should just kill myself but she doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
So that was really good. <laughs> Cheer, wow. Cheerful reading. <laughs> and anything else? Any other memoirs that you were reading? Um, I was eating. A, a, I was eating. I was reading a bunch <laughs> of eating eating disorder memoirs. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, more interesting than others. Mm -hmm. Did you? I was just talking to um, the writer Nell Freudenberger yesterday, and she mentioned. Uh, a book I'm about to read called Heavy by Kiese Lehman. Have you yeah. heard of that book? Yeah, I have. I haven't read it yet. So she said um, that it happens to be, incidentally, one of the best books about eating disorders she's ever read, which I found fascinating. And now I'm like, I cannot wait to dive into it. But just so you know. Cool. I'll add it to yeah. my list. Yeah. Definitely add it to your list. So have you been reading any fiction or is it all, has it all been memoir and nonfiction? Oh, you know what I read? I read Deborah Levy's most recent novel and I loved it. Oh, yeah. Um, it was called <laughs> The Man Who Saw Everything. I recommend that book. If someone wants a novel, I recommend yeah. that book. Um, I think she's brilliant. Um, I also really loved Hot Milk and Swimming Home. I mean, she just is, does something really different with her fiction. I can't really put my finger on it um, with any grace or dignity. I'm not that, I'm not as smart as her. <laughs> but <laughs> she's, I think she's a really, really special novelist. Highly, highly right. recommend. That's Otessa Moshveg. Her most recent book just came out, and it's called Death in Her Hands. That's right. She had a bestseller come out last year, and this year she has another bestseller. It's very irritating. There, I got it off my chest. Time for a short break. When we come back, surprise, the rest of Team Bookable joins me to share what they're reading. And spoiler alert, Darth Vader makes a very special appearance. Stick around. We want to tell you about another podcast you might enjoy. It's called Phoebe Reads a Mystery from Radiotopia. If you know the hit podcasts Criminal and This is Love, you know the voice of host Phoebe Judge. The New York Times calls it implacable and oddly soothing. In Phoebe Reads a Mystery, Phoebe Judge simply reads one chapter from a classic mystery novel every single day. Agatha Christie, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Wilkie Collins, Anna Catherine Green, and now Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oprah Magazine says the show is the sonic equivalent of a day at the spa. You'll feel soothed afterwards. Check out Phoebe Reads a Mystery on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening right now. Welcome back to the Bookable Summer Reading Special. So, like most folks, I've been hanging out on my couch a lot. Not least because I broke my foot, courtesy of a cute foster dog named Banana. Long story. But it got me curious. What's the rest of the Bookable team reading? The books people choose to read tells you so much about the reader. And listener... I learned so much about my colleagues. So I sat back down on my couch with my dog, Busy, and called bookable producers Andrew Dunn and Bo Friedlander and Loud Tree's web guru, Travis Taylor, to find out what they're reading this summer. Guys, hi. It's me. Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hello. Good morning. How are you? We're great. Okay, good. So I'm sitting here on my couch with... Uh, my broken foot and uh, busy. Oh. And we, I just got off the phone with Otessa Moshveg and Nathan Englander, but I can't wrap up this episode without talking to you guys and, and hearing what you're reading for this very blissful, carefree summer we're having. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, what you're reading and I want you to be totally honest and if you are not reading anything you can say that if you're just reading magazines you can say that but hopefully you're reading books so let me know tell me what you're reading 
Andrew, go first. All right. Well, I am jumping on to the Colson Whitehead train quite literally. <laughs> I'm reading the I'm reading the Underground Railroad. I am just starting it, but um I'm excited to uh to really dive in. And then I uh, I'm really really excited next because one of my favorite writers in the non-literary medium. He writes for screen and film and all that good stuff. Charlie Kaufman has a debut novel out uh, called Ant Kind that is a beefy 700 pages that I will dive into as my beach read. So I'm excited about that. Um, well, those are great. Those are great picks. I'm excited to hear your thoughts when you're finished reading both of them. Um, and it's an interesting pairing too, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's for very, sure. Very interesting. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, what about you, Travis? What are you reading? Um, I have been uh, quarantined with a two-year-old and a four-year-old for the last several months. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm uh, living vicariously through Bookable. Um, <laughs> so yeah, unless you count like a pop-up book version of uh, the movie Frozen, um, <laughs> <laughs> Good Night Moon, or... Uh, my son's favorite. Are you scared, Darth Vader? Because uh, I can do the voice. Uh, yeah. I think those uh, totally count. Those, count. those really count. Um, okay. Can you tell us about the Darth Vader book? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's sort of like a children's book, but it's a comedy uh, with a uh, sort of off-camera narrator asking Darth Vader if he's scared. And it just has things like, it's a werewolf. Are you scared? It's like, uh, what does it do? <laughs> it says like it can bite you because I'm wearing armor. It, it's a fun book, but uh, you know, your Darth, your Darth Vader, your Darth Vader is very on point, Travis. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're catching up on um, some important reading. Do you have two children or one? Uh, two. Okay. It feels um, like so ten, you, but just two. You read both of them in the same books. Uh, often, yeah. My uh, four-year-old's a little bit more advanced, so we're uh, reading through a bunch of Roald Dahl with her. Um, I've read The Hobbit. Uh, she really weirdly liked John Gardner's Grendel, uh, sort of his take on Beowulf. Uh, <laughs> so. I thought you were going to say she likes John Gardner's um, unwriting fiction. Uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a little more meta than I think she can do, but yeah. Uh. We're not giving her enough credit. Bo. Bozy. Bozer, Bowie. Yeah, yeah. What have well, you been up to? Having been a lifelong reader, I'm very, very good at reading books via osmosis. So there's several books that are around me, near me, uh, my my bedside that I haven't actually read, but they've been sitting there for the entirety of quarantine. <laughs> what are they? Machado de Assis. I just got the posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas, uh-huh. which I'm has a forward by Dave Eggers and I'm, I'm, it's just a penguin classic. I sometimes really do enjoy a, a good penguin classic. I think their logo is quite on point, but uh, uh, what I'm reading for real is uh, <laughs> I have been reading on loop rereading uh, uh, Candide by Voltaire, mm. the best of all possible worlds, because it makes me feel better about uh with the exception of like the discovery in Colorado this week of a, a squirrel with bubonic plague, it, it makes me feel better about the current crisis we're in. Okay. Yeah. Finn later. I've been reading Finn later by Sean Stewart Ruff. I've heard of it. So I, I just, I'm, I'm wondering, man, do you say Finn later or Finn Lauder? Um, you know, it's funny. I had trouble figuring out how to pronounce it, um, but it's Finn later. Uh, I had to wait until Sean said it to be confirmed. But that's well, it. and Amanda, for our listeners, uh, why did you talk to Sean about the pronunciation of his book? Um, well, it's not my turn yet, but okay. Uh, so, but it's because uh, I just recently interviewed Sean, and we're going to talk about Finn later, which I'll talk about when I when it's my turn. Um, but you know both, what it is, though. But you know what it is right now. What. Your turn. No, it's not because oh. I'm here. Sorry, you're not getting out of it. I want to hear <laughs> a little bit about your thoughts on Finn later. Um, I think that it, uh, I mean, I look at it more from a point of view of right now I've history. Like I don't understand why in such an accomplished book 
on a topic as timely as as uh, his first love with a with a guy uh, isn't more well known. Uh, so I've been just sort of like kind of like experiencing that little cultural shock. Yes, but I think that that's true of very many black authors. You know. Well, I think that's why that's why Sean came to mind because I was you know thinking back into my own career uh, working in, in 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 media and literature and. Sean was, was was one of many people who I was like, what you know, I what's going on with him? Because when in 1996 he published this anthology of uh, LGBT uh, plus Q plus plus uh, writers uh, of color, I mean that was really beyond ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, well, how come I haven't seen any books, you know, by Sean and. It, it had more to do with the apparatus of like why we started Bookable in the first place um, that, you know, there's just outlets weren't focused on uh, uh, as wide a spectrum of authors as, as we're trying to. Right. I really hope that a lot of people listen to the episode because he he's a remarkable writer. He's really something special. I'm so glad you're reading it. Also not a horrible human being either. Oh my God. I know I'm a little bit in love with him. Same. Okay, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, so I'm interviewing Claudia Ranking. So they sent me a galley of her book, which is called Just Us. But before I really get into it, I wanted to reread Citizen. And it's just, this book blows me. Have you guys read Citizen? No. Well, I, oh, I've, I'm, I've osmosed it. Can I make a required <laughs> reading for Bookable staff? It is remarkable. And I, I dipped into Just Us, which is her next book, and I stopped about three pages in because it's the kind of book where you learn something like that you had no idea about every four sentences. And it's so good that I absolutely can't read anything else but that. So I have to wait. I also started Heavy, an American memoir by Kiese Lehman. Mm. Mm, so damn good. That He's was great. Yeah. I've had this book ready to go for a, a long time, for a couple of years. But during my conversation with Otessa Moshveg, she was talking about how she'd been reading about eating disorders. And I was reminded of a conversation I had with Nell Freudenberger, who mentioned Heavy and how it was one of the best books about eating disorders she had ever read. And so that stuck in my mind and I started reading it and it's incredible. So I'm having like a really weird, amazing summer of reading after not being able to read at all for like three months. Amanda, when I was over there helping you with the air conditioner, I, uh, I thought I saw Banana, the foster dog, reading the, um, the new Mary Trump book. Was I? <laughs> oh my god i'm so embarrassed that you saw that because i bought that for myself and banana the foster dog opened the mail and she just oh. ripped it open before i could get there and she just dug in but, I, I actually was thinking about adopting her i was so impressed <laughs> um you guys this is this was great i i want to catch up on our reading habits like every month hopefully i'll be reading a, a grown-up book in a month yeah <laughs> oh, that would be great. I would love to hear what you pick up. Or, Travis, you could just read us parts of the Darth Vader book. That's true. I do think my uh, favorite contribution from that Darth Vader book, though, is now my uh, two-year-old son keeps saying that the power of the dark side compels you. Which, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Say how he says it. Say how he says it. The power of the dark side compels you. <laughs> now say how you read it. The power of the dark side compels you. Love it. Okay, people, listen up. I admit, I listed so many books, some got edited out, 
but I'm a sneaky mother fusser, so I'd like to shout out one of them, which is written by racial justice educator and freedom fighter Catrice M. Jackson. Her books are Antagonists, Advocates, and Allies, and White Faces, Missing Spaces. And if you don't already, you should definitely follow her on Instagram. She's at Catriceology. I want to thank Otessa, Nathan, and the whole team here at Bookable for sharing their summer reads. Check out the show notes for a list of all the great recommendations in this episode. Bookable is a production of Loud Tree Media. I'm your host, Amanda Stern, five feet tall and shorter than this stack of books I have to read. We're produced by me, Bo Friedlander, and Andrew Dunn, who also mixes and sound designs the show. Bo is Loud Tree's editor in chief. Find us on the web at bookablepod.com and subscribe and rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows. We're taking a short, short, like hot pants short, summer break to go read all those books, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks with brand new episodes of Bookable and we will see you then. This is Bookable. Let's talk about Get Booked, a weekly podcast for personalized reading recommendations. Get Booked allows you, the listener, to write in with your specific reading recommendation requests, whether they're for you, your book club, for a gift, or anything else. Hosts and former independent booksellers Amanda Nelson and Jen Northington answer your requests using their years of combined bookselling experience, and no request is too niche. Want a feel-good sci-fi romp with found family and a side of romance? No problem. Looking for the perfect book for your dad, who has only ever read histories of World War II? Amanda and Jen are on it. Need something, anything, for your book club to read that will make the members want to actually, you know, read the book? Done and done. In addition to their weekly personalized reading recommendation show, Amanda and Jen give you bonus mini-episodes every week, where they sell you on one underrated book that they love in 10 minutes or less. Get Booked is brought to you by Book Riot, North America's largest independent book site. Get new episodes every Thursday on your podcatcher of choice.